thank you everyone for being here today. It's a pleasure to have an opportunity to present to you. Uh, I see some familiar faces already here today, so I know there are some people who know a little bit about the geologic story. Others, this will be a, an initial introduction. For the sake of time, I'm just going to sort of launch right into it here. Uh, company overview, as you can see, the company is focused in Mexico. We currently are advancing and focused on our 100% owned gold copper porphyry project called the Tapal project in Mexico. That project currently hosts a resource of 3.8 million ounces gold equivalent. It's about 1.6 million ounces of gold and 725 million pounds of copper. Uh, that resource was produced um, in the spring of last year. We've since done an additional 30,000 meters worth of drilling. Uh, we've got a new resource coming out later this month, but all the numbers that I'll talk about in terms of the economics of the project speak to this current resource that you're looking at here. We're in the midst also of a pre-feasibility program that will be completed this June, and that will take into account the additional tonnage uh, to come from the new resource later this month, and we're targeting open pit production by the year 2014. Again, I won't belabor these things. You can read them as quick as I can say them, but I think the key points here are we came into 2012 well-financed with about $10 million in the till. Uh, our trading price recently has been in the 40 cent range. We trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and our market cap is about $58 million today. People, I think everyone in the room here, as well as uh, people like Lawrence, would, uh, would support the fact that people are really the quintessential component to any company's success, especially in this high-risk business of the junior exploration and development space. We think we've got a, a board with a very successful track record. Again, for the sake of time, I won't go through every individual CV, but if you like companies like Gold Corp and Silver Wheaton, um, a lot of the individuals on our board have come out of those companies. Specifically, I want to speak about Dunham Craig, who is our president and CEO. Uh, Dunham is a geologist, but um, if you speak to him long enough, you might think he's a mining engineer. His, his background has been building mines, putting projects into production. So rather than being an exploration geologist and simply interested in poking holes in moose pastures, he's looking at, can we build a mine here? Where is the infrastructure and, um, and location, and is there the potential to build something profitable here? Um, Dunham built a mine in British Columbia called the Golden Bear Deposit, which was a real cash catalyst for a company called Wheaton River back in the late 90s. And that cash is what attracted Ian Telfer to come into that company, Wheaton River, and, and leverage that cash into the building of Gold Corp. Randy Smallwood, who's now the president and CEO of Silver Wheaton, uh, worked with uh, Dunham at the time, and he stayed on and acted as Ian Telfer's right-hand man in the building of Gold Corp. So uh, those two, along with the rest of the board, a very astute uh, group of individuals in the mining space. You can see here we've got other assets in jurisdiction, other jurisdictions, but I'm going to focus on our projects in Mexico or our project in Mexico called the Tapal. Again, 3.8 million ounces gold equivalent. That breaks out, as you can see in the table, about half the metal value is in gold and half the metal value is in copper. And although there have been a lot of, uh, a lot of talk about precious metals and gold in recent weeks and months and years, uh, I suppose, as, as uh, Lawrence pointed out earlier, copper really is a significant economic component to this project and it really speaks to the, um, to the robust economics that we see through the mine plan. So having a resource in the ground is great. Uh, also, as, as Lawrence mentioned, it's advancing that resource, adding certainty to that and de-risking it that adds value. And so one of the first things we did upon completion of that resource last year was to engage an independent engineering firm, SRK Consulting, to come in and tell us, okay, it's great to have a resource, but does it make money? Can we build a mine on that? And so this is uh, some of the highlight points from that report that came out last April. Um, SRK used $1,000 gold, $275 copper, and $16 silver as their base case metal prices. I think given where these mar uh, metal markets are today, we can all agree that's quite conservative. Of the 3.8 million ounces gold equivalent, nearly 3.5 million of that fell nicely into a mine plan. Very low strip ratio of 1.14 to 1. This mineralization is all sitting at, sur near, at surface down to about 200 meter depth. Uh, very easy to extract. Operating cost on a per ounce basis, well below industry standard at just under $480 per ounce gold equivalent. Capital cost to build the mine, $312 million. I do like to point out that that's not just the capital to build the facilities, but that's everything. That's building it, maintaining it, contingency, closure, entire life of mine. So there's no surprises there down the road that we've you know, overcosted something. Um, and a mine life of 18 years with a four-year payback. We like that. Uh, banks like that. Various other forms of potential debt finance like that kind of a payback schedule. 
And basically the end result here was they indicated to us through the report that uh, the project had an NPV at a 5% discount of over $400 million. To a $58 million market cap company, you can see the, uh, the disconnect there between the asset value and where we're currently trading. So why does the project work? Why are the economics so strong? Really it comes down to three key components, location, infrastructure, and metallurgy. You can see from the map here, and specifically the inset map, which I'm sure is fairly difficult to see from there, but we're basically due west of Mexico City, out toward the Pacific Ocean. We're eight kilometers from the deposit to paved road. You could drive a smart car to the deposit. And then you're 14 kilometers on paved road to a community. You're 14 kilometers to power. Uh, that power agency has indicated to us that they could make available up to double the capacity that we require for our mining operation. All we need to do is string a line 14K. And then uh, if you look at the map also, you can see from the project location to the dash line there, which is rail, we're about a one hour drive. So that rail, one hour drive from site, takes us down to one of Mexico's largest deep sea ports, Lazara Cardenas, which accesses Pacific Rim countries. So again, if you're making any product, uh, and in this case a concentrate, you don't want to be hostage to any one end user or buyer. You want to have the leverage to be able to find the best terms. And uh, having that pack rim access really provides that for this project. This is a little bit convoluted and complicated. I'll try to keep it simple. Basically, in yellow, what you're looking at here is the uh, profile on the 18-year mine life. You can see the production rate is quite high in the early years. That's in part because we're heat leaching as well as milling. And uh, over the course of the uh, life of mine, we produce 134,000 ounces gold equivalent per year. That's a 23,000 ton per day operation. What we're going to be modeling as we go into pre-feasibility later this year, because we know we're going to have an increased resource and uh, we wanted to optimize the production profile, we've, we've, we're going to be modeling the pre-feasibility on a 35,000 ton per day, a bigger mill, larger throughput, basically in, in produce more material in a shorter amount of time. And so that's what you're looking at there in red. And that puts us up to the 200,000 ounce per year life of mine, gold equivalent average production rate. And the significance of that is about half of that is in gold. So we're producing 100,000 ounces of gold per year production over the life of mine on this project. And that really is a critical threshold, whether it's for mid-tier producers who would target for a possible acquisition and institutional investors. So that 100,000 ounces of gold is critical. And we're going to be exceeding that as we move toward pre-feasibility. So where does 200,000 ounces of gold equivalent sit in comparison with uh, other notable, perhaps more familiar names mi currently mining in Mexico? This is where we sit in comparison with those other companies. And you can see at 200,000 ounces per year, we're in the higher echelon, as I mentioned earlier. Um, they're actually doing it. Ours is only hypothetical at this point as we move toward uh, pre-feasibility. But it gives you an indication of where this project would sit. Um, in terms of comparables in Mexico and just how accretive this could be to, uh, to a company like Geologics if we were able to advance this project forward. Looking at the uh, deposit itself, this is just a snapshot of the central portion of the project, but uh, you can see the mineralization is contained in these three zones, the north, the south, and the Tezate. What we've been doing over the course of the last several months is uh, primarily infill drilling to bring this to a measured and indicated category. But also there's been some resource expansion testing along with that. And specifically down in the bottom there at the south zone, we put out some results in January um, that indicated that the mineralization not only extended significantly beyond the uh, 200, 250 meter depth of the model pit, but we were getting up to triple the grade. So we're not only expanding this at depth, but increasing the grade and certainly gives us indication that we've by no means exhausted the upside potential of this deposit as it sits today. You can see also that those same three zones, also still in light yellow there, really only represent a very, very small portion of the project area. It's probably contained within about 10, 12 square kilometers. We own everything that you're looking at on that map in green. So 172 square kilometers, that's essentially been unexplored up to this point. So we went out and we ran geophysics over this entire project area late last year. And the results of that came out uh, in February. And uh, it, although it's very difficult to see on this uh, geophysical map image, seven new anomalous areas popped up. And those will be the focus of our ongoing exploration work over the course of the spring and summer of this year. So essentially what you're looking at here with geologics is a sound fundamental asset in the current resource. Significant upside potential to make that bigger as we move forward. So what's the timeline going forward here? We've got a new resource coming out in March. Pre-feasibility expected to be completed by June of this year. That allows us within Mexican law to initiate the permitting process and advance toward production. 
At the same time, as I mentioned, we've got significant exploration targets that require ongoing attention and we'll be drilling those this spring and summer. Um, with that, I'll uh, thank you for your time.